Right. There's a lot to talk about, you know. So Mark McGowan, back to Mark McGowan. Mark McGowan, he used to like coming to my pub and having a burger at lunchtime. I mean, we, we, we'd, we'd chat when he came in. I'd sit down with him for a while. And he came up with this, he came up to me with this proposal. Because we used to, I used to do art exhibitions at the pub. They were very successful. And, uh, Right, okay. I need, I've got to. I've got to organise this. Okay. I've got to organise this. I've got, I, 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 I don't know how to punctuate or organise a blog, a video blog, but I'm going to do this by subject matter somehow. This is what I want to convey. <clears throat> what I want to convey is what it's really like as a publican, as a licensee of a type pub, <clears throat> and how how your experience of your business is <clears throat> pretty much constantly overshadowed by the ever-present threat that's imposed in the background of your life 24 hours a day by the presence of your uh, your business partner, your pub co. The people who've got the buying power, the people who've got the industry experience, the people who have the best estate in Britain the people who've got the best product portfolio, the people who've got the best uh, range of premium lagers, access to the best seller services, the best industry support, the best legal advice, the best, the best everything. They've got teams of highly trained area representatives who are there to help you understand your profit and loss account to help you plan your business, to help you decide what kind of beer mats to put on the bar. Uh, you know, to tell you that you're actually uh, employing too many people and your wages bill is too high, that your menu offer isn't broad enough, or in fact, that you need a menu when you're a wet lead pub. Anyway, yeah, you got to convey, that people out there need to understand what it's like, because it's irrational, it's wrong, they don't do anything. They don't offer any support. They don't do anything. They just make your life hell. Their job is to screw you down. I'm not. I'm not being weird about this. Their job is to screw you down. Make sure that you do everything uh, and everything possible to make sure you. Ma their job is to make sure that you do everything possible to make sure that they make shit loads of money out of you. That's what it's all about. Their job is to make sure that you don't make any profit that they take all of the profit that your business is generating so that you then cannot argue the toss over your your position. Their job is to make sure that you're so financially precarious that you can't walk away from the contract because you've got too much to lose. And there's a paradox there. Because in a sense, if, you got, if you're not making any profit and... You work on your nose to the grindstone all the time. To say that you've got nothing to lose uh, sounds like slightly, I don't know, is that contradictory? You've got everything to lose. You've got everything to lose, but you're not earning anything. And, the, and that makes you, that puts you in a position of um, being able, being incapable of acting. It puts you in a position where you can't readily advocate for yourself you can't stand up for yourself you can't you're in fear of your pub company firing off some kind of letter that says you have to do x y and z by the terms of your contract which is going to cost you fifteen thousand pounds to sort out you're in fear of the eho the environmental health officer walking into your premises even though they're clean and so on and so forth, your, your premises are knackered because they're uh, old and run down. So the EHO might walk in and say, well, you've got to put a new ceiling in the kitchen and uh, you've got to do this, that and the other. You've got to seal up these holes. You have to, you have to rewire the wall in the kitchen because the cables could be a source of uh, contamination and grease accumulation. And then they walk away, leaving you with a 
sheet of ticks that mean 7,000 quid, 6,000 quid, 3,000, 2,000, whatever has got to be spent to sort it out. We'll be back in six weeks, and if you haven't done it, we might close you down. You know, this is just business, but it's what happens, and uh, and you can't afford to pay any of this stuff. The uh, same with the fire department. It's just, it's, it, it's a, it's a, the, the, you know, the reality is people sign leases on buildings that are not fit for purpose, and in signing that lease, they then become responsibility for responsible for the fact that the building's not fit for purpose, and all the statutory authorities do what they need to do in order to make sure that these catering businesses actually uh, comply with the law. And legally, all the pressure is put on the tenant on the tenant to pay to sort the building out. Whilst the pub company who let it to the tenant in the first place go, well, you know, you should have sorted those things out before you signed the contract. The thing is, if you argue the toss a lot heavily before you sign the contract, they'll just say, we're not doing it. You're not a reasonable tenant. You're not a reasonable client. You're not, uh, they're not the kind of person we want to work with. And uh, they'll put you in the position where you know you can make this, this place go really well. You, you can put your energy and time into it. You can make it work. You know the area. You've done your research, all this. And um, and the pub company goes, yeah, we're not interested in doing business with you. We're not interested in doing business with people like you because you're awkward, you're difficult, and so on. So you end up signing a lease. I, I'm not I'm saying I do this. I, I, I had my experience. I got a fairly good deal when I went in, but my God, it wasn't good enough. And... Um, the point of it really is that all of this is about there's no balance of risk and reward. The At the point of going into a contract with a pub company, the tenant is designed, is designed to make the tenant take all of the risk and for the pub company to take all of the reward. I will get around to Mark McGowan eventually and uh, I don't know, I might be able to narrow down some of these things I'm talking about so that it's much more succinct. Yes.